Today Project Focus finally gets a tachometer. This thing's under 2,400 pounds. It's got a side exit exhaust. It's got a full suspension rebuild, including coilovers. But for some reason, Ford decided it did not need a tack. I've been dying to get a tack put on this thing forever. Here it is. We just got it working. Let me show you how we did it. So you can go on Amazon and get a tachometer for 25 bucks, and it seems like you should just be able to splice into the wire going into the coil, but it's not that easy. Uh, number one, you got to get one of these. That's a tack driver. That's about 105. This this one's an autometer. I'll put the link below. And these things get horrible reviews. It didn't even light up when I wired this. So I went and got a, about a $60 one. That's what's in the car now. That's also an autometer. So now before you even start buying any other supplies, you're at about 170, which isn't bad, but that's a, it's a lot more than 25. So why do you need this thing? It seems like you should be able to just splice into here. Like I said, that's uh, obviously the pulse that it can calculate the revolutions from, but for some reason it doesn't work like that. What you got to do is find the wire that powers all four coils. So unless you got an old project car that runs off a distributor, you got to find the power supply wire for all four of your coils. I downloaded a wiring diagram. It didn't really help much. So I just started cutting apart my harness and I found this junction right here. It's got six wires coming in this side and three of them go to cylinders three, four, uh, two, three, and four. So by process of elimination, we know that one of the other three wires coming out of this side is the power input. Trace where the other three wires went, and uh, one of them went down here to my idle control valve. The other one went, I forget where, knock sensor, I think. So then we cut the power wire and spliced in the red wire, which sends the power into here. And then this comes back out here and goes downstream into this junction. So I got everything hooked up just good enough so it'll work. Um, the only tricky part after you do this is you got to get the obviously the signal wire going into the, the cabin. They say drill a hole through your firewall. I didn't want to do that. I've got this wire coming under here. I used a uh, wire coat hanger, taped it to the end and stuck it through. Comes out right here. And then you got to power your tack. And I just drilled a little hole right here. So now we're under the dash. So once we're under the dash, we got the white and red wires going into the fuse box to actually power the tack. Now you still need a switch because the uh, dash light switch is downstream in the fuse box. So we got a switch here. This was only eight bucks on Amazon. I'll put that link down below too. Uh, and I think we're gonna be able to mount it right here next to the steering wheel. All right, guys, we got good news, bad news, and good news. The good news is it actually works. Look at that. We got our toggle switch working. We got our dimmer working. Everything works, including the actual tag. And I'm kind of surprised because I looked up a bunch of videos, loud exhaust. I looked up a bunch of videos and didn't see one where they actually got it to work. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. The bad news is, once I got it above 4,000 RPM or went to full throttle, the needle would bounce all over the place. So it was basically useless at full throttle and at high RPM, which is kind of the whole point of attack. The good news is, Autometer has got really, really good customer service. I emailed them within two hours. They emailed back and said, the bouncing needle problem is usually with Chevy's, but they have something what's called a, uh, it's basically a, a little resistor and uh, they sent it free of charge, no questions asked. I didn't have to show a receipt or anything. It came two days later. I installed it. I'll show you that in a second under the hood and it is perfect. Perfect all the way up to red line. I love it. I think it's pretty accurate too. Uh, once it warms up, it idles at about 750, which is right where these are supposed to idle. So this thing is a ton, a ton of work, including stuff that a, an expert wouldn't run into, but I did because I'm not an expert. It ended up taking me like 12, 14 hours because there's actually four separate items you got to wire in and each one has obviously power, ground, and info. So that's what, 
12 or 14 different wires I had to do. So quick rundown on everything. We got the dimmer switch here and the actual tack wires run through here. And then I drilled a little hole right here in the side of my dash comes in right there so the tack itself and the dimmer switch are right wired directly into my fuse panel uh, make sure you pick the right fuse something that's not going to be turned on like my radio i had a dead battery one night because i was into the wrong fuse uh, and then the power to the tack actually runs through Let's see if you can see up there that's the back side of my toggle switch so the tack itself turns on and off of that and then to get the actual information Everything runs through here into my fender and comes out right here. Everything's uh, double wrapped in uh, electrical tape. In this case, it's insulated. And then it goes over here. And then this is obviously the tack adapter or the tack driver mounted against the firewall, nice and solid. And I do have some insulating electrical tape there. I think it's still gonna be too hot from the header. So I'm gonna get some reflective uh, tape there to just keep more heat off of it. And then everything runs back behind here and goes to ground. Okay, and here's what the auto meter sent me to fix the bouncing needle. And that actually went in between, well, you've got your, your coil power line coming here. And then I diverted it over the tack adapter and then it comes back out and goes on its way down to the, the coils. And the three watt resistor just bridges between the two. Obviously everything's all wrapped up so you can't see it. Honestly, I think that's a semi-professional looking wrap job. Everything looks nice and neat out of the way. So there you go. That's a lot of wires going a lot of different places. Uh, but everything's done except we got to finish up this thing. So let's do that. All right. Like I said, I don't do a ton of wiring. So uh, anybody who does, go ahead and let me know what I'm doing wrong. But so, oh, hey, that looks pretty good. So far, I've had no problems with my stuff staying together and working. Tack on, light on, and light bright.